Let's delve into the overall market uh, right now. Andrew Ditburn, your Senior Investment Manager at Canon Asset Managers, joining us. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. Thank you. Let's talk about this uh, new gold company. I mean, what are your thoughts on it and the investment case that lies therein? Because uh, yes, there are a lot of issues that have, that it's had to face, uh, that it's had to face. But of course, it is highly cash generative, and that's of course one of the positives that everyone wants to point out. Yeah, I think saying that will attract local investors is definitely that potential yield um, that you could see coming from it. I think under the right conditions, I think it could do exceptionally well right conditions being a weaker rand and a stronger gold price. I mm -hmm. think if the company I has mean, what, what do you mean by those levels? Weaker from here on out? Because the gold price has been under pressure, but the, the rand has been... No. Weak. I think at these levels, um, I think it can do exceptionally well. I mm -hmm. don't think the rand needs to go weaker or the gold price needs to go stronger. I think if they work in the opposite direction, it's going to be difficult, not just for the new company, but for all the gold companies um, in South Africa at the moment. So yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens next week when foreign investors or the goldfield investors receive their shares. I think that takes place on Monday. What the foreign investors do with the shares, whether they offload them or hold on to them, I think will be quite interesting to see. Yep. Goldfields are apparently de-South Africanizing um, their operations, hence selling off these assets. It's surprising to see, well not surprising, it's interesting to see that they, they've kept South Deep and hence the majority of their reserves sit in South Africa still. So I'm not sure whether that argument holds much mm -hmm. credence. Then again, KDC and Beatrix, which are the, the mines that Sabanya holds now, they've got all the same ongoing arguments. Old mines, deep mines, expensive to run. So. It's going to be interesting to see what goes, happens going forward. But I think also it is a, is a case of mines that are on deep level and mines that are deep level. And there's a different type of mining that takes place in the gold fields now, mm. the new gold fields uh, versus the Sabania gold. Yeah, exactly. I think they've obviously reduced their costs. Well, that's what they, they're trying to do. Mm. Um, we don't hold gold fields at this stage and we obviously don't hold Sabania given that it was only listed today. Um, so yeah, you know, what happens going forward with, with both companies um, not too sure we'll be interesting to watch it play out. Well, let's say in the, the resource space because Implat's falling today on the back of that mm. trading update. We know the results are out on Thursday. Uh, profit's likely there to plunge as much as 80%. I mean, that's a huge uh, drop-off. The market's slightly scared by that. Uh, but where the stock is trading right now, I mean, from a valuation perspective, is it attractive at all? Um, I think it's attractive. I think the platinum industry as a whole is looking quite attractive. They've on paper? On paper, exactly. They've done quite well since the lows of July, August. Um, I think Implats has done around 25% since then. So if you really wanted to take advantage, you're probably a bit late. Um, but I think there's still quite a bit of value to be had there. If you look at it through the cycle, um, P.E. ratio, for example. And just remind us what that is. It's, it's looking at earnings over the past five to seven years and put, um, adding back inflation and taking the average. It kind of gives you a through the cycle look what these companies can do. Obviously, the earnings have been hammered because of, of what's happened over the past year. Um, so when you look at a trailing 12-month P.E., they look quite expensive. I think Implats trades at about 25 times. But if you look at what it can produce through the cycle, they look very attractive. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you've got to be looking at at the moment. And I think Implats has fantastic management. It has good assets. Um, I think it's quite an easy case to make for, for holding s s some of the platinum. Mm. Interesting, um, interesting view there, but you're a deep value investor, so <laughs> going for, <laughs> that, says, for that yeah. position. Um, what about Arcelor staying, of course, in the value space? Uh, it's saying today that they've had that fire at Thunderbell Park, they could be declaring mm. force majeure in South Africa. That, of course, has an impact on the country if that is prolonged uh, when it comes to, to the steel industry. But Arsenal Missile, I mean, this is just another piece of bad news. Yeah, I mean, they've just had a tough time of it over the past just two to three years. They've had cold furnaces, just on iron ore, infrastructure spends not coming through, hence construction companies are doing poorly. So, I mean, it's just bad news after bad news for these guys. And, and, and you've seen it coming through in, in, the, in the multiples at the moment. Uh, if you're looking for a contrarian stock, I think this is definitely... <laughs> What needs to change, though, at ArcelorMittal? Jeez, oh, <laughs> that's very difficult to say. I mean, ArcelorMittal, if you look at the company globally, um, they've, it's, there's exceptional management there. These guys have good assets in South Africa. Um, you know, I think if they can get these assets working for them, if this infrastructure spend comes through, I don't think China is going into recession, so there's going to be demand for steel globally. Um, I think if they... <laughs> If they get that right, if, if their management team can get that right, I think um, we could see this company re-rating at the moment as, as, as trading at single-digit PEs. Mm -hmm. It's exceptionally attractive if you're willing to take on that risk.
Yeah, but as you say, questions raised perhaps about, about management strategy, decisions that have been taken. Uh, let's, let's move on. Hold Sport, uh, trading update, five months ended January. The sales were up 11.2%. New to the markets, uh, mm. so we're getting used to the kind of numbers that come through from this company. Were those good enough? Um, I think those numbers were very nice. Um, if you, I mean, this is a company that hasn't really benefited from the retail boom that we've, that we've seen over the past year. Um, these guys sell in-house brands, which are generally seen as low quality if you look at your, some of your food um, producers. However, th their in-house brands aren't, aren't that. They sell them in their competitors. Um, they f the First Ascent um, brand, Cape Storm brand, are doing very well. Um, I think going forward on a PE of 11 times, this is exceptionally attractive when you look at a company like Mr. Price, which would be a competitor, or you could see it as a competitor. Mm -hmm. I think if you're wanting to get into the soft retail space, Holt Sport, Holt Sport would be a nice entry point. Now I wonder what the whole story is around Sipla today because it seems mm -hmm. that Indian newspapers are reporting that they put that deal on hold, the, the bar, 51% bar of Sipla South Africa, uh, perhaps looking at other opportunities in the market, re-evaluating uh, that deal. It seems that Sipla South Africa not wanting to comment on that. What, what would you do if you were holding the stock right now and having bought it on the fact that this deal could come through? Yeah, I don't think that's an investment. I don't think you should be buying a share based on what might happen or, or proposed acquisition. Um, I think at the moment you're looking at some pretty poor communication. Um, I think, well, Sipla India have said that they haven't, um, that Sipla Saifka haven't accepted the bid. Sipla Saifka are saying they haven't received an official offer from Sipla India. So it seems to be a bit of um, issues around communication between the two companies. The bid, um, or the so-called bid that's, that's on offer at the moment of 855, I think it's a bit cheeky. I think specifically given the new contract that they've just been awarded. Mm -hmm. I think With government for ex Antirator Viral. Exactly, that's it. Mm -hmm. I think this company should be trading or an offer should come in well in the in excess of 850, what they what they offered at the moment. So, hence we've seen the share trading at about 950, because um, that offer was expected to be revised. Now it's apparently off the table. We saw the share come back quite a bit today. I think Sipla at 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 um, the current price looks about fairly valued.